Hello, hello, and welcome to the somewhat inaccurately named Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2. So as you probably noticed from the stream that went out on the channel a few weeks ago, uh, we've now actually technically finished K2SE, and so we managed to do, sort, sort out the Fenestra victory, we solved the Stargate puzzle, and we've completed the game. However, Mark and Tristan decided it'd be fun to carry on playing and uh, and see how much further they could get, how they, if they could get the science running a bit better, make the whole factory run a bit more smoothly, all of that sort of thing. So I thought I'd stick my head in and have a look at what they've been up to, see what's been going on, and have a little bit of a talk about the sort of uh, improvements they've been making. The first thing I want to take a look at here is Tristan's Ark Collector ship. And this is a, a ship that will essentially is designed to go out and just stay out there in, in, the, in the depths of space doing useful things for approximately forever. And it manages to do this by essentially having all of its needs fed by an Arco chest, which you can see here in the, in the middle of the spaceship. So this chest is being gradually, is, is having all of the bits and pieces that the spaceship needs brought out to it. Uh, for example, we've got, as, as you can see, it's got the various bots that might be needed. It's got uh, space probe rockets. It's got ion canisters to keep the ion engines running. It's got singularity fuel cells to keep this reactor up here running. And it's got uh, Arcosphere collectors as well. And all those things have been put into the, uh, into the Arco link chest here. And then they're being unloaded as the required by this filter inserter here. So they will then, we, we have a, uh, as you can see, there's a network circuit and condition set up along here. So we're watching, we're, we're saying, we would like to have all this stuff, please. We're, we're subtracting the contents of this chest from that. And so they'll then get passed through as and when there's any extra of those needed. The, the spaceship can then be parked out somewhere in an asteroid field. We can place down a space probe rocket silo like this with some boxes on it to request the, uh, the, the, the Arcosphere collectors and the space probe rockets. So they can be automatically loaded in here. We will then leave this running. It will, uh, it will produce the, it will produce the space probe rockets ready to go. Uh, we can launch, we can load in the Arcosphere collectors and launch it. And so gradually, in theory at least, we will gather Arcospheres. And up here we have a blue chest that is requesting to have any Arcospheres that are in the area. So as soon as any are discovered by this, uh, by, by the rocket for launches, and they'll be put into the red chest, and then they'll be brought up to here by a bot, put into the Arco link, and sent all the way back over to Norbit. So the idea is this is an entirely self-contained system and because all of the fuels it requires and all of the supplies it requires are all brought out in an Arcolink magic teleport chest, it can just be left out there forever. And so Tristan's left it out in, some, in, in various different um, asteroid fields for quite a long time. If we take a look, look at the list here, we can see in total we've now launched 1,540 collectors, which is a lot. And with, uh, 123 of those have gone from Caltrops, 237 from Dark Assemblage, 376 from Dusty Voids, and so on. So there's some quite big numbers along here. Um, because, essentially, the ship has been sent out uh, like this, and then just left there for, for quite a long time, to just steadily launch rocket after rocket after rocket. And because at this stage of the game, when you la launch large numbers of rockets, you tend not to get all that many Arcospheres back. So I would be surprised if this if this rocket launch actually gets me any at all. But if you send enough out, then the, you roll the dice enough times, you'll get a few of them back. And Tristan has done the uh, done the numbers, and he says in total we've gained 572, or at least we've polarized 572 Arcospheres, and we've then since made quite a lot of those, 280 of them, into Arco chests. And we'll get onto that in a little bit more detail later. And so, as you saw from the list in the uh, Informatron, the Arc Collector ship has been out to quite a few different uh, asteroid fields now, and it's been left to run in each of those, and that's produced quite a lot of Arcospheres, which are then turning up in Norbit in this Arcolink chest here, because they just passed straight through, they go into this one. We're also requesting a load of stuff over here to, in order to keep this chest uh, topped up with all the things it needs. So down here, you can see there's another constant combinator, and this has a list of all of those things we were talking about before, all these things that need to be passed out, sent out, in, or put into the Arcolink chest, to be picked up at the other end when they're required. And we've got, we've got a few spaceship repair parts in here as well. But the idea is those can then be fed through there and we'll, we'll uh, keep, and it'll keep, allow the ship to carry on running. And it's all being supplied by bot. Like that, I guess. So there was another Arcosphere collector arrived then, passed it into the box and taken off and by, uh, by magic. And then over here, well, any of these sort of the, the things that we don't want so much, so the Arcospheres can be taken out. They're passed along here. We've got a filter that put them into the box and then into the uh, into the machine over here that polarizes them and turns them into colorful Arcospheres. The, and the two empty fuel cell types can also be brought out over here. And then they're purple chested away to get rid of them and send them off to just wherever then wherever they wherever they're getting refilled. And so that means we've now boosted the number of Arcospheres we have. 
and I believe there is also a system somehow, somehow, somewhere in here that is monitoring the number of Arcospheres in here in total and then sneaking off, yes here we go, this, this one is sneaking out some of the lambdas and putting them in this box, originally whenever there's more than 200 in here and I think that number might have been tweaked slightly, although it seems to be in the uh, roughly 200s oh look there's, there's an Arcosphere came out and it's being passed here so now we can do some polarising so we've got somewhere vaguely in the region of 200 arcspheres in here it should be at least it should be about 200 because this one up here is set to pull lambdas out if there's more than 200 of absolutely everything in total on the uh, on, on in the in the arcsphere network and those can then be taken away presumably by bots because it's a red chest and they will be made into more 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 arcolink chests and the idea behind this is to allow us to boost how much of our stuff is being transported around by Arcolinks. Because as we were saying in, in the retrospective, and we've said in, in various other videos, Arcolink chests are incredibly powerful, they're very, very useful, but because you get them essentially right at the end, after you've set up every possible type of production, every type of science card required, and you've got all of the resources being brought in by then, it's a bit of a sort of, a, you look at it and you go, well, okay, I've got these now, but everything's already working, so what am I going to do with them? And the answer is, you have a couple of the people involved in the game carry on playing after the game has finished, in inverted commas, and they, they go and they uh, redesign the entire factory to work around using Arcolink storages very, very heavily. So we'll take a bit more of a look into that in a minute. There is, however, one other element required if you're going to go around deploying Arcolink chests, and that is you need to be able to put them down somewhere. And because an Arcolink chest, you can't just carry it like a normal, like any normal item and then just place it down and, 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 and call it good, because each Arcolink chest has a number assigned to it, and that number is based on the surface it was first placed on. So, for example, the one that's bringing the Arcospheres back from the, uh, the Arcolector ship is number 21. So that one is number 21, and if we have a look at the ship itself, then we'll see that's got a 21 on it as well. So that means those two are sharing an inventory. If we find another one, like this example on Talos, this one is number 30. So that has a different inventory, and, a different, and that's sharing that inventory with any other Arcolink chest, which, has an, which is a number 30. So you see that lots of them have different numbers, and you need to make sure that they match up to ensure that the right... Um, ingredients are taken, or the right resources are taken to the right place. And so, in order to do that, you need to place down both of your Arcolink chests at the same time in the same, well not necessarily at the same time, but in the same place, and then transport, well, at least one of them to the place where you actually want to have it. And so in order to get that working, Tristan made this ship, which is an Arc, which is called the Arcolander. And the idea of this ship is that it has two Arcolink chests stored inside this chest inside it. And you can fly it out to wherever you need to put the first Arco chest down, uh, the one that's going to be, the one that the area is going to be named after. So let's place one of those down first, so we'll put that one here. And that will be given the surface number for, the, for Norbit, because that's where the ship is at the moment. Uh, so we'll wait for the box to come over and put that one down. The second one you'll put down inside the ship at the same time, and that will then be also be placed by the box, and that one's ready to deploy. Eventually the bots come over and they'll build the two chests for you and it turns out number seven is, is Norbit. So we, we see we can get that one placed and we can get the other one placed. There we go. So now we've got these two and they're linked. They have a shared inventory that, so anything goes into one of these will then it will be available in the other one as well. At this point you can then take off with the Arcolander ship and fly off to wherever you want to put the other, ed, other end of the connection. So that might be involved going and landing on a planet, it might go flying to another space station, anything like that. And when you get there, and this is the clever bit that I didn't think of while we were playing, you can then tell the bots to remove a chunk of wall along the side of the uh, ship there, and while you're waiting for that to happen, if you're quick, you can move the uh, Arco chest outside using the Dolly Pickers mod, and then, actually, and then also you can then say, actually I didn't want to do that, and if you're quick enough, you might be able to get that done before the bots come in and take anything away, so you don't even need to uh, remove and rebuild any of the spaceship. So that's a really easy way of deploying your Arco chests, and I'm... Um, quite impressed with that and I'm slightly annoyed with myself that I didn't think of it. I guess I've uh, I've not had time to properly internalise the Dolly Pickers mod because it's just a bit too powerful perhaps, uh, but that's really really good. The way I did it instead was I had a, little, a couple of little protrusions sticking off the side of the ship and I'd have it fly around to wherever it needs to go with, with an arca chest in each one, then I'd have it land at uh, the first place, I'd detach one side of it, then I'd fly off to the other place, detach the other piece, and that meant I'd need to rebuild it. Now, I, and you could remove the, the excess wall that was around the outside of the protrusions as well, but you did lo end up losing a little bit of spaceship flooring, whereas with this method you just move it straight off it onto whatever flooring is next to it, and it, it just works. So this is a slightly neater and slightly cleaner method, so I'm quite impressed. And so, now that we have all of these Arcolink chests, well that, mean, that has meant there's been able to be massive improvements or massive upgrades or 
possibly even just shortcuts uh, being made to all the different logistic systems going out to the different planets. And the first one, according to the notes I've got here, was Njord. And you can, what you can see here is we have the, uh, the, the space elevator that was being used before. So we had the trains going round round here. They'd come down and they'd drop off all of these resources here. They'd be taken over, put into the warehouse here, then taken away to be used by the factory as required. Then the train would fill up with uh, cryonite and other miscellanea, go back up the space elevator, and at the other end of the space elevator, well, there's a spaceport. And so a spaceship would land here. It would fill up with all that stuff. It would unload other, the, the other stuff it had brought out from orbit and fly off with it. So that was the old way of doing things. And it, it worked quite nicely. However, now we've moved, on, moved onwards a little bit. And now instead of all of that shenaniganry, we've now just got a single Arcolink chest down here. And you can see this one's number 24. So another, uh, another setup. And if we look inside it, you can see it's got some plastic in it that's coming and going. Uh, it's getting um, vulcanite appearing in it. We've got some holmium appearing in it. Lots of things are being put in and then immediately taken out at the other end. And so I imagine the way this is working is we've got a, we've got a monitoring system that's keeping an eye on all of these warehouses up here. So we require plastic, we need cryonite, we need vulcanite, and we need stone in order to keep the system on Njord working. So we've got a certain amount of those being stored over here and then we're presumably subtracting a quantity from that and then sending it over to, back over to Norbit uh, where the other end of this chest, or actually no, probably on Norvis? Ooh, I don't know. We'll have to go and have a look in a minute. Uh, but sending it over to the other end anyway where it's saying, um, where it's telling it that we, if we need, if it ever need any of this to be shipped through. So if we keep an eye on this, you can see that the, uh, the holmium is, is flowing in here and then just disappearing as if by magic and being taken away to be processed. Oh, and look, some stone has just come out because apparently this system said, oh, we don't have enough stone. Can we have a bit more, please? So that's flowing through. And now it's topped the warehouse back up to the, the 5,000 that it's meant to have. And so this flow of stone has stopped again. And then the same will be happening with the um, with the vulcanite and with the cryonite and with the plastic. There's some vulcanite coming out and there's loads of cryonite com coming through. Yeah, loads of and there's a load of cryonite coming through as well because we're getting through quite a lot of that. So all, it's, it's just steadily, it's just basically keeping the area all, all nicely stocked up. And this is pretty similar to the way we used to do it by spaceship. We'd send a signal back to uh, Norbit and we'd say, okay, we're going to need to load this much cryonite, we need this much plastic, this much vulcanite and so on. Could you load it all into the spaceship, please? And the spaceship would load it all up and it'd bring it over and unload it here. However, this has one major advantage over that system. There is absolutely no latency in the, in the system at all. So as soon as, as soon as a request is placed, the stone can be put in at the other end and it will appear immediately in the Arcolink chest and be unloaded and go and go and flow over through here. So that means we're in each, each load that comes through is going to be maybe a few hundred, enough to fill this piece of belt up along here perhaps, or just whatever's being requested by the, by the system over here. It flows through very, very quickly and then it, and it stops again. And then maybe a minute later, 30 seconds later, whatever, then we'll have another request for a little bit more stones. We'll top it back up again. And so it means you, you don't have that awkward position where you're trying to load up, where you're trying to guess how much of the resource you're going to get through in the time it takes for the spaceship to fly over and fly back again. And you're trying to make sure that you've uh, you brought over enough that the spaceship is going to be able to fill up with enough stuff to bring back, and so on and so on. But as before, we've got all of the then we've got all the resources we, that we're shipping out from here. So the holmium being the main thing, but also a load of iron ore, some coal, a bit, little bit of uranium, rare metals, and so on. And all of that is being just being chucked straight into the uh, into the Arcolink here to be passed through uh, and and, and sent her back over to back over to Norvis. And over here in Norbit, you see that things are sort of kind of similar to the way they were before. We've got a, a shipping area for Njord over here. However, we no longer have a space for a spaceship. We have, we still have the warehouses in, but they're completely superfluous now. They're not in use. It's possible they've only been left in place because there's cables running through them and to remove them would break, potentially break things. <laughs> uh, but essentially we've got the other end of that Arcolink chest here. That's that's also also a 24 as you can see. And we've got the supplies that are being fed into it out of the out of the warehouse here. So it's, it's still got the same system flowing in all of the resources, flowing into this warehouse and then being dumped into this Arcolink as they're required. And then all of those resources that are coming back from Njord are being fed onto the belt up here. So it's very much the same system we had before, then flowing over into this warehouse and then being sorted up to, to the Holmium to go up to here and all the other waste products to go over to here. It's, as I say, very very similar to what we had before but now instead of having spaceships in the middle we've just got the Arcolink. So it's a lot faster there's no latency in there at all. It's also much kinder on the UPS because these are just chests with a shared inventory. They are absolutely trivial to run uh, whereas the spaceships I believe are place a little bit of drain on the UPS. So despite all of the upgrades the others have been doing over the last month or so uh, I'm still getting about 33 UPS which I think is about what I was getting before so that's um, that's quite impressive and I think it's the removal of the spaceship that's done that although I haven't, I haven't put any 
serious thought into that, it's just a sort of a gut feeling. I probably don't need to go through the um, how the inserters are cabled in in too much detail, but again, as usual, you, you, you can imagine we've got the filter inserters on here being set by the signals that are coming into them based on whatever the system note on the other end is short of. And then over here, we've got the uh, the output uh, insert filters being set based on uh, anything that's in the chest minus huge quantities of absolutely everything that we ship out there. And so that makes sure that only the things that have been brought from Njord get unloaded onto these belts over here. I imagine a, something that's going to happen in the relatively near future is that a lot of these warehouses and the train systems that are taking the, uh, the, the waste resources, the scrap, down onto Norvis are going to also be replaced with an Arcolink chest. And that might be done by just linking them all up with some, perhaps some belts that will run along the middle or along the top here or, or along the bottom. It doesn't really matter. Along somewhere. And have all of these belts uh, that go into the warehouses at the moment emptying onto another, into another Arcolink somewhere just to, just to keep everything tidied up and put away into, into, into a single neat place. And so Njord was only the first one of these systems to be set up. Because it works so well and it's such a nice design, as long as you have enough Arcospheres to spend on it, they then continued on and they did the same sort of thing for Talos. And that's all the way over here because it's been set up as a new system. Because Talos is a, is a slightly weird one. Because it does the uh, both Beryllium and Naquium, it requires rather a lot of resources. As you can see rather clearly here, we've got so many different things flowing into the warehouse here and then being passed over into the Arca chest. So we've got number 26 here. We've got lot, many, many, many different resources going in and then coming out. Well, we don't seem to have any um, Beryllium coming out at the moment. Maybe that's because 28,000 up here is as much as we want to have. I'm not sure. We'll have a look in a second. We've got the various uh, junk resources coming out this way and being fed up over here. We've got the Naquium coming out and being fed out over this way, going into, uh, well, there's a long, long underground belt uh, train system, and it's being fed all the way over to here, which is where it was coming into before when we had spaceships doing this. Um, and then and uh, then any beryllium that comes out can be fed up here, and we'll go into the beryllium train, which is ready to head off whenever it's required at the other end. If we have a look over on Talos, you can see the same sort of thing again over here. We've got the, the beryllium is all available at the moment, but it's currently stopped because there's enough at the other end. We're watching for less than 80,000 at the other end, and there's currently, uh, currently apparently there is um, 80,000, so it's not running. Great, that's working as you'd expect. We've got the miscellaneous junk from all the sort of the byproducts of processing, core processing and so on coming through over here. So those are getting fed in and just teleported away to be got rid of. We've got uh, sulfur is being tr and, and cryonite are being treated slightly separately. Ah, yes, because they're required for the for the uh, beryllium processing, and then absolutely everything else that comes out of here, everything else goes into the warehouse here, which is where we're keeping a, a sensible amount of everything. So this warehouse, we're watching this one to make sure it's got the right sort of quantities of supplies in it, and then we've got the standard filters on the inserters over here that will unload the the warehouse, put the stuff on the on the belt on this belt, which takes it all the way across over here out to the uh, the naquium processing area, where we can chuck it all into these warehouses, and it can then flow down them merrily as we've seen before and looking over here things seem to be working pretty well there's no uh, there's no vitalic acid barrels on the on the belt over here however that's probably bec just because we've uh, filled up the vitalic acid tank down here so yeah there we go we've got, we've got 30 thousand in there so we don't need any more at the moment but as soon as we do we'll pass some of those barrels through they'll come through here drop down here they'll be uh, emptied and then pass into in, put into the into the uh, storage tank there it looks like there's a shortage of vulcanite and uh, dark green bottles of vitalic reagent, but that's just because they're stored in this warehouse because there wasn't room before. Now these days, with the much lower latency, because we're using the Arco Links, we could probably have smaller quantities of it stored over here, and it would be absolutely fine. But you know, we, 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 when you've got a system set up and working, it's it, it's easier just to leave it basically the same, even if it, even if it means we've got a few thousand of, it, of various things being stored over here. We do seem to have a bit of a shortage of methane ice. However, we also have a spaceship that brings methane ice in from another planet, and so that's brought in separately and is is, is completely separate from that uh, that part of the system. So that's that's absolutely fine. We've got plenty of methane ice that's just stored over here. So yes, once again, the system is working nicely. It's pulling everything through an Arco link that was being that was being uh, provided before, and is quite perfectly capable of uh, of getting rid of all of the all the resources that are being produced, whether it's byproducts or the actual stuff that we want. And as you can see, those are all being fed through here to make sure we have the right quantities available over in Norbit. The next one after that was Bigrid, and um, Bigrid, as you'll remember, is where we produce all of our Vitamalange uh, products. And so instead of the instead of the the uh, the various fleet of spaceships we had that were coming over and just desperately trying to keep everything balanced using a memory cell system and just hopefully trying to bring all the stuff we could possibly want over. We've now got an elegant system which uses uh, Arcolink number 34 here and we just have a store a supply of everything in the uh, in, in the uh, in the warehouse here that could be passed up as you've seen before and this has been modified further. Mark has put in a train system up here with separate trains for all the various different fighter products and this is definitely a good thing because I remember in the past we had lots of problems with the fighter products not really being distributed very nicely because there was 
There was a clever system that would load just whichever products were required onto a train, and then the train would go around all the stations it could possibly find, dropping off products where it, where they were needed, but it meant it took rather a long time to go around, and if there's high demand, it really, really struggled. So having separate trains like this is going to make the whole system work a lot better. And as you can see, we've got lots and lots of things being brought through here. Mark has also added in an additional ArcoLink chest for, um, for for the big grid system, and this one is placed on Norvis, and this allows this allows him to keep a steady stream of, um, of of mineral water barrels going into the chest and take out all of the junk down here. So instead of it being unloaded in space like the other ones are doing, he's instead got a much cleaner system where only the only the stuff we actually want up in space, the these pro the uh, the actual Vitamalange products, are being unloaded here by specifically by these inserters. Uh, and there's nothing actually, despite, despite Despite these belts being here, there is nothing actually being unloaded onto these junk disposal belts. All of that gets unloaded down here on Norvis and goes into a disposal system over here, so we can have a train drop in here, pick up all the junk and take it away over to be recycled, rather than having to uh, bring it down from space. So this is sort of related to what I was referring to earlier with, with saying, well, why don't we just have all of the junk being brought straight down from space? So I suppose something we could do, which might be a little bit horrible, but we could certainly do it, is have all of the rubbish that's being unloaded here, it could be brought over and put into this chest over here and that would enable it to get teleported down onto the ground and then the uh, systems down there that I just showed you would take it out and put it into the recycling systems. That's not all that nice because it means you're putting a lot of extra load onto this chest and that could mean that if you when, you when you're trying to bring through large quantities of Vita stuff you might run into problems with it just getting a bit over full. However it would certainly work but given the number of Arcolink chests we seem to have at the moment, it would probably be easier just to set up a completely new chest system with on, a, on another number that just takes the stuff down onto the ground. So we probably won't end up using that. But, it, you know, it, it, it's a possibility. And that one could also be used for unloading any Vita products we need on the ground, but I don't think we actually need any Vita products down on the ground, so um, not actually required. And if we have a look inside it, there's nothing in it at the moment because we're not loading anything in because there's no demand. We can have a look over on Big Grid as well, and you see we've got the same sort of system. There's a spe there was a there, well, there still is a space elevator here. It's very it's still very useful for bringing power down to the planet from all the uh, solar panels up in orbit. But it's basically it's not really being used for transport anymore. We've got all of the all the resources are coming up here. They're being and instead of being fed into the train that was parked along here before, they're now being fed straight into the um, into the uh, Arcolink here. And then all the stuff that's being brought out is fed up into this into this warehouse where the train was unloading to before, and then that can go to wherever it's needed. We've then got again the same sort of system on Kothar, so you can see we've got the, the iridium flowing through here, because apparently we're still, we still don't have a huge amount of iridium, but we've got, we've got some. So that's going into the uh, teleport chest being taken away, and any resources we need could be dropped out and, and come out over here as well. We seem to have quite a lot of mineral water barrels uh, on, the, on, the, on the belt down here, but that's fine, we've got them coming through as, as, as required. That was the other one that we saw over on Norvis where we have this chest here, this is number 27 as well, and that's got another supply of mineral water going through there, because Kothar is another planet that gets through mineral water as well. And then we've got the, we'll have got have the usual one in uh, Norbit that's feeding in all of the other resources that are out, required out on Kothar. So we've got the, um, the enriched vulcanite, elevator cables, uh, meteor defense, uh, vulcanite, rare metals and stone all being fed into here, and then we've got the uh, iridium coming out because we don't need to have the waste products coming out here because they're all automatically going over down to Norvis as we as we discussed in the same way that big grids are. I won't talk about this any further because it's working in exactly the same way that every other system is. <laughs> There's another one for Andragon over here so um, we've still got the spaceship outline on this one but over here yes we've got the um, because Andragon isn't doing anything particularly clever all that needs uh, to be shipped out to it is uh, cables and um, and meteor defense ammunition and then we have loads of stone flooding out here that can go into into the system as as and wherever it's required and we've got those you can see we have to have this flowing through that's probably going off to Njord or somewhere similar and it can also be loaded into the train to be taken to wherever it's needed and we've got the junk coming out of the floor so yeah running in much the same way as lots of other systems we've already looked at over here we'll find that Agnair is again once again exactly the same we've got our arcling down, our link down here feeding in all the inputs it needs feeding out junk and vulcanite and enriched vulcanite that can then flow off to wherever it's needed exactly the same as before and then finally we get to snowdrop where they've done something rather different so all the things we've seen so far they've been using exactly the same processing system we've just taken out the spaceship and replaced it with an arcolink 
Snowdrop, they've gone one step further. And the reason it's now down on Norvis is because for Snowdrop, instead of having the system we had before where they process the, all of the cryonite into the cryonite rods and ship it out by spaceship or even by Arcalink, they've gone a step further. So now we're feeding in um, core chunks and cryonite ore directly from the mines into the into the Arcalink chest. So you can see over here, we've got, we've got a cryonite mine. Uh, we've got various cryonite core mines scattered across the planet because uh, they've been out and they've gathered probably all of them. I don't, I don't know. Um, it looks, looks pretty cool. Oh, no, there's, no, there's a couple up here. So they've gone out and gathered quite a lot of them. And so that's all then delivering the uh, delivering all the cryonite ore and the, uh, the cryonite core chunks and cryonite ore into the Arcolink chest here. So that's instead instead of sending the uh, the finished product through, we're now sending through quantities of the uh, of the uh, the core chunks and and the ore. And all, and all of that ends up over on Norvis, so we're centralising the production a little bit now. And then we've got now we've got a cryonite processing area over on Norvis, where we're going to load it straight into a train and have it go to wherever it's needed. And this is, to be honest, getting a little bit ahead of where I was planning to go with this particular video. But the reasoning behind this is because we were ha we were worried that we weren't going to be able to get enough cryonite through from Snowdrop. And also, it's a bit of a faff having it or having all the production done out there, where it's very very difficult to generate power. And we I think we're using beam power to keep everything running. And so instead it thought it'd be easier to uh, to bring it all over to Norvis where power is much easier to get hold of because it's a bit closer to the sun so solar works better and then we can do all the processing over here generate and generate the uh, the cryonite rods as you can see now I did notice that the cryonite ore is flowing but the cryonite core chunks are not and that's not the way around we want to have things and it looks like the uh, the belts have jammed up along here we're not we don't seem to be getting rid of the um, the the core chunks as quickly as we would like. So that's going to need a bit of, um, and maybe the stone as well. In fact, they're, yes, they're both full. So that's going to need a little bit of investigation to find out why those things aren't being got rid of. Uh, we do seem to have some core chunks coming through. I don't know. I don't know why there's sand and, and core chunks going into this train. This whole area looks like a little bit of a mess and probably needs a little bit of a look uh, investigation, which I'm sure they'll they'll spot and they'll be on fairly soon. But at least with the uh, with the cryonite ore coming through, it means we are still generating everything we need in order to keep this running. So the advantage of this system over the other one is it means you can turn your planets into very very simple mining outposts quite easily. So you can go out to, to a planet and you can just put down the core mines on it, pipe them all into an Arcolink chest, and, and teleport it all back to back to your plant back to your home central central processing station here on Norvis where it can then be de be dealt with and in theory this isn't working at the moment but in theory you can do all of your production from core chunks and that means your mines will never run out and it but it means if you need more you just have to go out to another planet and set up more core mines on that planet and they can also be on uh, Arcolink number 36 so you'll just have one receiver Arcolink and then multiple transmitter Arcolinks that are just sending the resources back to this one and so this should allow us to get a um, to be to, to expand much more easily because every, all of the processing is going to be happening in the one place but we'll, um, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll see how this goes as it gets sort of finished off, polished up a little bit and, and just generally improved and tweaked and, and, and so on. I think I might have said finally earlier, and I probably shouldn't have done because there's a couple more places to look at. So we've got another Arcolink out here on Stardust that's bringing all of the... Uh, the it's actually just bringing straight Naquatite back, isn't it now? Straight out of the mines, being brought over here and shipped back, shipped out. So the only extra thing we need out here is um, is sulphur, and at some point we're going to need a bit of iron and a bit of water, but that's being brought, uh, brought over by the trains that I put in, ooh, ages and ages ago, to be turned into sulfuric acid to go over to the, uh, the mining trains to allow them to fill up. But we've got a nice healthy supply of Naquatite coming out here. And you'll notice that's going into number 30. And I imagine if we take a look at Melancholia, we'll see, yes, that's also going into number 30. And this is the first Arcolink system we, we saw, the one we set up while the game was still, before we actually finished, should we say. And the other end of that is over here on Talos. So you can see out here we have lots and lots of the uh, Naquatite pouring out over here, ready to pulverise and down the process, yada, 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 all, all the stuff you've seen before. So in theory, this should keep the whole system going. I don't know why there's, I don't know why there's various different controls on the, on the belts over here, why we seem to be prioritising some of the production. Maybe those have got higher tier productivity modules in. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not going to look into that right now. That'll be for uh, for another video. But yes, this, this whole system is working and we can also use this to transport um, the sulphur out and water out and anything else that's needed in order to keep the whole uh, Naquium's production system running. This did require some tweaking over on Melancholia, largely to tell it to only pull stuff out when it's actually required, rather than just all of the time. Uh, so we only want to run these when, when this system actually requires these various different inputs, because the sulphur is also being sent out through this is exactly the same Arca chest over to Stardust. And actually looking at this, I'm not quite sure how that would work, because we've got we've got an output here, so presumably if you wanted, presumably this could then theoretically, if we had enough sulphur here, these belts would fill up, on these, and this would all block up up to here. But then how you wouldn't be able to get any water ice through. So, hmm, I'm not sure how this has been set up and how this works. 
maybe it relies on, we're back in Stardust now, maybe it relies on Stardust being able to pull the sulfur out just as quickly as Melancholia can, and therefore they'll both always stay happy? I don't know. I'm sure Mark or Tristan will let me know in the comments. And it looks like it's, it's, I'm sure Mark will let me know in the comments, because that, that, this is something he's done. And it has occurred to me that I've not really been giving credit as, as where it deserves as I've been going through the video. I did say that all of this work was done by Mark and Tristan, but in a nutshell, basically Tristan was working on the, the R Collector stuff, so the two spaceships that I showed you right at the beginning, and Mark has generally been working on the Arca Linkage. Actually, no. And then Tristan's done some of the Arca Linkage. He did Njord and Talos, Andragon, and he worked on, well, they both worked on Snowdrop, and I think Mark did the rest of them. He did uh, Big Rid, Kothar, Agnea, and and the, and, the, and these two, the Naquium one, Stardust and Melancholia. So they've both been work hard, hard at work on these, and they've also been doing other things as well. But I think this is a long enough video now. Uh, I've, I have no idea how long it's going to be at this point, because I spent a little bit of time looking at, looking at things and trying to work out how on earth various things have been set up. So, um, um, <laughs> But we'll, we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm sure it'll be a reasonable length. Uh, I'll be producing another one, of course, where I shall go in, and I'm going to talk about how the science has been going on. And then after that, I shall talk about uh, various bits of tidying up and new things that have been developed, and other, other, other bits and pieces that have been changed around the system since I stopped playing. And this is all quite exciting for me, really, because there's loads and loads of things have changed since I stopped playing and it's also so things are very very different and um, yeah lo lots of interesting stuff has happened so I'm uh, I'm quite enjoying this process so I hope you'll I hope you are too and you'll uh, you'll uh, come back to along to the next video which should, I'm, I'm gonna try and keep Factorio videos coming out at least once a week for the foreseeable future until I've managed to get through all of the sort of the the aftermath of, uh, of the K2SE run all the things that have been done after we finished all of our thoughts about it with the retrospective videos all of that sort of stuff so I hope you're enjoying it very much and uh, you're subscribed to the channel so you won't miss any of it thank you very much for watching I hope to see you on on uh, Mondays for, well, we're going to be doing XCOM streams again uh, by the time you see this video, and also on Wednesdays for Jen's First Factory, where she's going in and playing Vanilla Factorio for the first time ever, and um, making some very interesting spaghetti. So, thank you very much for watching, hope you'll join me for those streams, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.